Hey guys, I'm on vacation right now, but I was editing this video and I realized that it's just way too long. So I decided to split it into part one and part two. If you haven't watched part one yet, check it out. I'll put it right here. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be part two. Hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you on the inside. All right, next one is a huge trap question. And that is, what did you dislike about your previous job? Now they know that you either already left your previous job or you're planning on leaving your previous job in order to take that position. So with this one, I cannot stress how important this is. Make sure to never bad talk your former employer or your employees that you worked with. I don't care how bad they were, never, ever, ever say anything bad about them. So the way I recommend answering this question is start off by saying something really nice about your previous job. And then after you've said something really nice about your previous job, maybe your boss that you worked for as well as your fellow employees, then what you wanna say is that job didn't have the advancements that this job offers. And there's many different ways that you could say that. For instance, you could say, this company seems to be on the cutting edge of technology and it's extremely innovative and exciting. And I felt like the previous company was wasn't nearly as innovative and so I outgrew them and then after you've done that finish it off by saying that you truly appreciate the opportunities that your previous company gave you and then maybe say some nice things about the people or the boss and this is also known as the sandwich method so whenever you're going to maybe lightly criticize something you want to say something nice then the light criticism, then something nice again at the end. And the light criticism of the other company needs to be framed in such a way that you make the new company look really good. All right, so this one is a huge trap question. Very easy to mess this one up, especially if you get caught off guard. So this one goes into trap tier. All right, next question is, what do you like to do outside of work? Now, this one is kind of a subtle trap question, and here's why. When they ask this question, they are evaluating you to see if you are a good fit for their company culture. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to lie, but you should definitely emphasize the parts of yourself that make it seem like you might be a model employee. So for instance, if you like spending time after work, raiding dungeons on World of Warcraft until 3 a.m. in the morning, that's great, but keep it to yourself. Some activities that it might be a little more appropriate to mention during a job interview, it might be things like hiking, uh, spending time with family and friends, sports, cooking, volunteering, uh, reading, things like this that just make you seem like a wholesome person. So this one goes into trap tier as well. The next one on the list, why do you want this job? This one is kind of a light trap question in my opinion. You know, this is one you definitely want to prepare for and give a pretty good answer. Talk about things that make the company unique. Right, so this is where you wanna do research on the company, look up their mission statement, their vision statement, et cetera, and talk about the things that make that company unique. What sets them apart from their competitors? Maybe it's that you think they're much more innovative than their competitors. So that would be a great thing for you to talk about during the interview. Now, I have seen people make jokes about, you know, to pay the rent or for the money or things like that. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when I tell people I'm from Kansas and they say, Oh, you're not in Kansas anymore. Um, it's funny the first maybe one or two times and then after hearing it a hundred times, it's just not funny anymore at all. So that's one of those things you definitely want to avoid saying. So I'll put this one in the trap category, although it's kind of a light trap question. What experiences do you have that would make you a good fit for this role? All right, so this one is actually a great opportunity for you to showcase that you did your homework on the company and the position. And let's be real here, the question is slightly annoying because they have a highly curated resume right in front of them that they can read and it lays out your experience line by line. But you don't wanna be boring and just go through your experience like you did in the resume. What you wanna do here is demonstrate that you understand the role that you are interviewing for. And then you wanna talk about a few things that you know are very important in that role and talk about past experiences that you had that are similar to that that showcase that you can do it and this involves doing a lot of homework before you interview with the company so for instance there was one company that I interviewed with where what I did is I asked somebody who was in the position that I was interviewing with at a different branch and I basically asked them what are the most important things that the company is looking for in this position and they told me about a few key metrics that the company is just constantly talking to their employees about because they're very important. And so what I did during the job interview is I talked about a few of these really important metrics. And then I gave them examples from my last job of me working with similar metrics and improving them. So this is a really great opportunity for you to just knock it out of the park. Um, definitely keep this one work related. Um, so for that reason, I'll go ahead and put this one into work tier. 
The next one is what is your greatest achievement? And this is another one where maybe your greatest achievement is getting 99 strength on RuneScape, but you should probably keep that to yourself. Or maybe your greatest achievement was beating this really annoying kid in high school in a 1v1 playing Modern Warfare 2 on Rust. Again, you probably want to keep that to yourself. I would highly recommend keeping this one either work or school related. Pretend like they asked you, what is your greatest work achievement? And this is one where you do want to structure it like a story. So, you know, maybe there was something that was really bad happening at one of your jobs. They had a really huge problem. You came onto the scene, you solved that huge problem for them. And then at the very end, everyone was happy. So you really want to structure this almost like a story. This one is going to go into work tier. Next question, what kind of leadership style do you have? Now, most companies want to hire people who could potentially move into leadership roles in the future. The fact that people are interested in leadership roles kind of showcases that they want to learn and they want to get better at their job and they want to progress within the company. And think about it, nobody wants to go into a company, uh, stay in the same exact position, doing the same thing for years and years at a time. Everybody wants to either change responsibility, take on more responsibility, take on leadership, you're eventually going to get incredibly bored if you just do the same thing over and over again. And it's going to lead to you probably not getting as much work done and spending all of your time at work on your phone. Now, this is really a cultural question. And the answer they're looking for is you basically have a leadership style where you're very collaborative. You like to coach people. You're very hands on. You're very engaged. You're proactive. You want to get the best out of people as well as getting the best out of yourself. So this one goes into work tier. Next question is what makes you better than the other candidates? This is a super big trap question. It's also a really stupid question if you ask me because you don't even know the other candidates, right? You haven't looked at their resumes, you haven't even met them. And so how would you even know the answer to that? But anyways, you wanna answer this question in the same way that you answered what makes you a good candidate for this job. You don't wanna get super competitive and be like, I'm better than these people because of this or that. You just wanna keep the spotlight on you and talk about yourself and what makes you a good candidate for that specific position. If you start bagging on the other candidates, it's just not a good look because let's be honest, you don't even know them. So this one goes into trap tier. What's your ideal work environment? Um, the one that I'm interviewing for right now? This is kind of a silly question too. But this cookie cutter way to answer this one is say that you want an environment where you're rewarded for your hard work, you have opportunities to progress, you get to learn new things and pick up new skills, and eventually you move into a leadership position. And you also wanna talk about being really collaborative, being a good teammate, and having a good positive work culture. This one is gonna go into work tier. Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, employed, hopefully. This is the equivalent of them basically just straight up asking you, are you interested in being a manager or a leader in this company? And the answer is yes, of course you are, even if you aren't. So you wanna tell them how in five years from now, hopefully you have learned a lot from your job and you have moved up within the company. Don't tell them that five years from now, you wanna be working at Google or running your own successful business. You wanna make it clear to them that you have long-term intentions with their company. So this one is a little bit of a trap question. I'll put it in trap tier. All right, so the next one is going to be tell me about a time when type questions. And this could be any combination of the past questions, except ask in this story style format. This is based off of the belief that past behavior does tend to be an indicator of future behavior. Now, sometimes they might ask you specific questions, so you do have to be really prepared for that. And if you get stumped at any time with this type of question, especially when they're asking for you to just come up with a story out of the top of your head, something that happened in your past, don't be afraid to ask them for a few moments to think of an answer. Now, a slightly different version of this one would be the what would you do if type questions. This is essentially the same exact thing as the last type of question. You can attach this to just about any of the questions that were on this list, but this is much easier because you're basically just going to think in your head, what would you do if? So they'll give you an example of a situation with a coworker or, you know, a customer or something along those lines. And then they would say, what would you do in this scenario? Now, behavioral questions tend to be much more accurate in my opinion. And companies are kind of moving away from this type of question because let's be realistic about this. You could probably just BS some answer off the top of your head and tell them what they want to hear. Now, I do have a gift for you here. And what I highly recommend is you go over these different behavioral interview type questions. You come up with a story for each one of them. So there's different sections on here. So for instance, the first section is coping with stressful situations and interpersonal conflicts. What you want to do is come up with at least one to two stories for each section. Most of these questions are relatively similar. And the truth is you could probably answer all 
all of them with the same story. The next section is motivating others and leadership skills. Again, maybe come up with one or two stories here. The next section is initiative or action oriented. The next section is teamwork and team building. The next section is goal setting. The next section is achievements and accomplishments. The next section is handling failure etc 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 so what you can basically do is come up with a story for each of these types of questions and depending on the way they ask you the question you can modify your story so for instance if they ask you the question in the way of tell me about a time in the past when then you can tell them about a time in the past when you did that thing so you tell the story if they ask you what would you do if your brain is going to remember the story and you're going to get to tell them very similar things to what you did in a similar situation in your past so it's gonna come across a lot more smoothly than if you just tried to memorize the answer. So for instance, they could ask you, what are your strengths? They could ask you, how would your strengths help you in this situation? Or they could ask you, tell me about a time in your past where you demonstrated some of your personal strengths. And if you just do the third one, the tell me about a time in your past where you demonstrated some of the personal strengths, you have all three answers covered. Now, this is another bonus for you. The way that you answer these questions is what's known as the STARS method. And STARS stands for situation, task, action, result, and then I actually add the S onto the end, which is basically summarize what you learned. So you basically want to describe the situation that you were in. You want to talk about the task that you were doing at the time. And that might involve talking about the problem that presented itself. And then you want to talk about the actions that you took in order to solve that problem or do that task. And then at the very end, you want to talk about the results. And then at the very end, I always like to summarize things just to make sure that I'm actually answering the question that they asked. And I like to end it on a positive note. So so I tell them kind of what I learned from the situation. Now I made much more detailed videos on this in the past on this channel, definitely uh, check those out. But the STARS method is super powerful for telling stories. Now, if you want access to these behavioral questions, um, I'm gonna put it down in the description in the resources section. So it'll be basically at the very bottom of the description. Now, the last question is the most important one. Do you have any questions for us? This is a great question and it's an opportunity for you to demonstrate that you've really done your homework. You to ask them things that talk about their experience at the company you want to ask them things that show that you are interested in them you also want to ask them things like what is the onboarding and training process going to be like if i get hired and if it's a good organized company with a good work culture they should have answers to all of these questions but this one does involve you doing your homework so for instance i can only give you examples as a pharmacist and if you're not a pharmacist you're not going to understand what this is but i like to ask people about provider status this is basically where pharmacists have more opportunity to do other things outside of dispensing medications things like prescribing really basic medications giving people consultation sessions looking over a person's profile and optimizing which medications they're taking and I like to ask them what the company's doing or what the company's planning on doing in order to facilitate provider status now this is something that you're really not going to know anything about unless you're in pharmacy so this one goes into easy tier check out this video right here if you want to know the highest paying entry-level job Jobs, gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, or ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, etc. that you have on the video, and I will see you next time.